Oh boy, today we have a showdown. This is the Sony 15mm f1.4, which I just called in my last video the best APS-C lens for the Sony system that I have ever used. And that is still true. However, this lens is $748. So we're going to pit it up against two cheaper competitors that are fantastic lenses in their own right. The 16 millimeter 1.4 from Sigma, my all time favorite lens for the Sony APS-C system. Oh wait, there's one more. The Viltrox 13 millimeter F 1.4 joins the fight. I originally wasn't going to include this lens. I was going to make it a 15 Sony versus 16 Sigma. But in my comment section, there were a lot of people demanding I throw in this Viltrox 13 millimeter. And you know me, I like to bow to peer pressure. So it's in the battle. And yeah, sure, it's a lot more work for me. But hey, you guys benefit, right? It's all about you, isn't it? Now we're back in the studio because these three lenses are fantastic for the studio. This is the Sigma 16mm, which I have frequently shown you on my little channel over here. I'm on the uh, a7 IV with the S-Log3, the Slog3, and I'm on the APS-C mode. I'm also using the active steady shot, which punches in a little bit further to give me my preferred framing. I like it uh, at about this length in my little studio. But anyway, let's talk. I've been looking at some of the footage. Let me tell you, just you can't go wrong with either of these three lenses. You got to figure out which one is good for you. All three are absolutely outstanding. This is an embarrassment, an embarrassment of riches. And I want them all. Well, I actually have two of them. So there's only one more to get, but it is the most expensive one, the Sony. But I have done a bunch of tests, and hopefully these tests will help you decide which lens is for you, if any. Although, if you don't want one of these lenses, I, I don't know what to tell you. Me and you, we're not drinking the same milkshake. That doesn't sound like a phrase anyone's ever said before. Anyway, when it comes to focus breathing, let's start there. Uh, the Sony 15mm is the winner here. There is almost no focus, probably no focus breathing. I can't see any. The, uh, the a7 IV actually has focus breathing compensation, you can use it with this lens. However, you, the frame doesn't change when you turn the focus breathing compensation on or off because it doesn't need to change because the lens has no focus breathing. The Viltrox is also excellent when it comes to focus breathing, not quite as perfect as the Sony. And the Sigma is third probably in terms of focus breathing, but it's still excellent. Uh, any of these lenses in terms of focus breathing are more than acceptable. Sony perfect, other two almost perfect. Focus speed and focus tracking. Uh, again, the Sony is probably the best, but the Sigma is almost indistinguishable in terms of its focus abilities from the Sony from what I found. And the Viltrox is also, you know, uh, very, very good. It's a, it's a, it's a close third. The biggest problem with the Viltrox lens when it comes to focusing is that it uh, hunts for a split second when you have your autofocus sensitivity up on high. If it's on seven on your ZV-E10, you're gonna see a little tiny warble when it tries to grab focus. It still keeps focus on your face, but you can see the background pulse. Now, in my Viltrox review video, I said as long as you turn your AF sensitivity down to four, which is medium, then you'll see a nice smooth transition. You won't see that pulsing and you'll still have amazing autofocus. Where the Viltrox does fall behind though is focusing in extremely low light and also the noise of the motors when it is struggling to find focus. And I did a low light test with these lenses and a low light test, they're all 1.4 lenses, so they're all letting in the same amount of light, but I did it for uh, the focus to see which lenses were better at focusing under extreme low light conditions. And I couldn't see a difference really between the Sony and the Sigma. They both focused fantastically. I couldn't believe it. In the dark, in the pitch dark in my backyard, they were still focusing. Uh, and the Viltrox was actually focusing as well, but it would take longer to grab focus. And since I was using the internal mic, I didn't have an external mic plugged in, you could hear the motors grinding as it was trying 
to find the focus. Now that is never going to be a problem if you're using external microphones, which you should always do, you know, your lavalier mic or a shotgun mic. But if you are using the on-camera microphone, let's say for the ZV-E10 out for your night vlog, you're out at two o'clock in the morning in a graveyard, you know, plotting something nefarious, those focus motors are picked up by the sensitive mic on the ZV-E10. Well, what about going out and about? I know a lot of people who watch this channel are interested in vlogging their gorgeous faces. So uh, let's go out and see how these guys do out in the real world. Okay, so we're gonna start on the active steady shot here. And as you can see on the 15 millimeter Sony, this is uh, quite punched in. It's a little too tight for the old vlogging, but uh, if you don't wanna run it through Catalyst Browse and you don't have a gimbal with you, then uh, this is probably what you're gonna have to do. So you might want to have a selfie stick that extends a little bit further, but then, you know, you look like a strange guy with a stick just extended straight out there. You know, smacking into cars, things like that. This one, it's a little less noticeable how insane you are. And now we're on the Catalyst Browse, which is great because I'm only gonna crop in about 10% and I'm gonna get that dreamy like gimbal footage without a gimbal. Sure, it's some extra steps and a pain in the butt, sometimes but you know this is pretty good and i also got to say since sony only lends me uh the lenses for about two weeks well not about two weeks max and then i have to send them back there's a fair amount of pressure to get these videos out especially when they've sent me three lenses like they have and it's really helped my confidence with the old vlogging there's a lot of people around right now staring at me and but i'm like you know what i got to get this video done who cares about these people and the fact that i'm a 44 year old man out on the street talking to his camera that's normal so this is the 16 millimeter right here i'm trying to hold the camera basically the same place and it should be slightly tighter certainly than the 15 because 15 is less than 16 and uh, this is just way too tight now like i said i have the selfie stick here so i could extend this like that but now there's a car coming and i got to pull this in that was him there almost destroyed my camera and so now once again the necessary catalyst brows in my opinion, if you're going to be using this type of focal length, because at least, it's a super loud car, because at least you're only cropping in 10%, so you still see a little bit of the world without having to stick your camera out into some guy's car window. You know what I'm saying? Now this is the Viltrox on the active steady shot, which is definitely more doable, still a tiny bit too tight. It was really nice vlogging with that 11 millimeter from Sony or even the 12 from Sam Yang, but this 13, you know, like I said, get a little selfie stick. This is the third time I'm mentioning it. And you can just push it out. I'm, I'm hammering the point home. It's just, you know, out here, oh, that's nice. You know, that's a nice little vlog right there. Still though, this is, this is doable. Oh, check out the Catalyst Browse now, huh? When you have the uh, 13 millimeter and you're only cropping in about 10%, then I think that is an acceptable amount of the world to see you know just enough of me to be your focal point which is important after all and then the rest of the world now the thing is i didn't expect to use the 13 with this because i was pitting the 13 against the 12 and the 11 because i thought that was a little more appropriate for the wideness but it does sit right in the middle between you know the 11 and the 15 so i could see why people would want this compared to the 16 and the 15, personally, since I already have the 16, the 13 for me is enough of a difference that I take this around for the more vloggy stuff and I leave the 16 in the studio, but uh, you know, hey, this is for you people. Now, obviously the Viltrox is the widest of the lens. 13 is wider than 15 and 16. So that is the lens that you might want out in the world because it gives you the widest field of view, but there is a caveat and that is the 15 from Sony can be run on the tiniest gimbal in the world. I don't know, it's not the tiniest gimbal in the world, but it's the smallest one I have and it's the smallest one I could think of for something like this. I mean, it is the Zhiyun Crane M2S. It is so small, it is so light and you can just stick a ZV-E10 and this lens, also a little microphone, wireless microphone pack and an ND filter. And this Zhiyun Crane M2S handles it just fine. Then you don't have to crop in at all on Catalyst Browse. You don't have to use uh, the active stabilization. So you get the full width of the 15 millimeters and you get such smooth footage. Boy, oh boy, that is a big win 
for the Sony if you want to use a small lightweight gimbal that I'm really starting to like doing. Since we're talking about the Sony lens, let's just stick them up here on old Harv on the a7 IV. And as you can see, it's a tiny bit wider for the 15 millimeter focal length. And now let's talk about vignetting. When it comes to video, there are some people who have been asking me in the comments about the different vignettings of the different lenses because it matters a lot to some people who have very bright backgrounds or the sky is behind them. They don't want to see too many dark corners and some lenses are better than others. So let's take a look at the vignetting wide open because usually when you stop a lens down, the vignetting will go away, but wide open, let's take a look at what we have. And the winner here seems to be the Sigma 16. It has the least amount of vignetting. The 13 from Viltrox comes in second. You can see a bit of vignetting. It is not very much. And uh, the 15 from Sony is the worst of the bunch when it comes to the vignetting, but that's the thing is you made such a small compact lens, it's hard to make all of the corners super bright when you're stopped down to the 1.4. Now here's the thing for me, not a big deal at all. I don't care one little bit. It doesn't bother me uh, to have a tiny bit of vignetting in real world applications of what I shoot. I never notice the vignetting, but for those of you who are doing some, I don't know what you're doing in mean, green screens. I don't know what, what you're up to, but you might want to know the difference between the vignetting at the 1.4 and there you go. Sigma, Viltrox, last place, Sony. Now this next test is about ghosting and flaring and why is that important? I'm glad you asked, is that if you're taking photos and the sun is behind you, it's going to be a big issue. And also, if you're out there with your dumb face and you're doing your videos, you just a lot of times when people are doing the vlogs or they're out, you know, making their content, the sun is going to be behind them because it is in the middle of the day. So you want to have good contrast on your face when you are in a really backlit situation. Now I'm happy to report all three lenses do a good job with this. The Sigma in my opinion does the best, followed by the Viltrox and then the Sony actually comes in the worst in this situation. But again, these are all pretty good. I mean, there are, there are some flares that are blaring through and you lose some contrast. You have some ghosting there but these are still good results even for the Sony 15. When you compare it to something like the Samyang 12, which I'll be showing in a later review, you see how much worse it could be. And again, this is a pretty extreme, like I have the sun just high in the sky with no clouds and I'm shooting the lens at the sun to try to get these flares and this ghosting. I'm doing it to stress test the lenses, and what I have discovered is the 16 does the best, followed by the 13, followed by the 15. Of course, the test wouldn't be complete without the little Viltrox 13 mil f 1.4 here in the studio. And I gotta say, like, I really, really love this lens, the Viltrox lens. I, you know what? Let's talk about build quality. I actually haven't mentioned build quality, but it's an all metal lens and it's got an aperture ring that is not clicky. It is smooth. So video shooters might like the smoothness. I personally prefer clicky. I wish it had a switch to click back and forth like the Sony lens does, but it just feels so premium. Now, who knows? Sometimes I find with metal lenses, the paint chips off over time, but I also don't mind that either. It's kind of like your guitar. You know, if you play it enough, it's going to have some paint chips in it. It kind of just adds to how cool it is. That's the way I feel about metal lenses anyway, but it just, it feels premium. It looks premium. It is not that heavy for a metal lens, but it is the heaviest of the three and it makes it harder to balance on a gimbal. You certainly can't do an M2S. You can get away with a Crane M3. It balances on it, but barely. It barely balances, so you might even need to step up from something more than an M3 if you want to run it on a gimbal. The Sony lens feels good, but it is all plastic. I do love the aperture ring very much. The clicky on-off switch, the autofocus, the manual focus button, the focus hold button. The Sigma is just the worst of the bunch in terms of its build quality because it's just got it's got nothing here. It's just got a it's got a nice ring here, but it doesn't have any kind of buttons, any aperture ring, and uh, you know, it's a fair amount of plastic. Whereas uh, the Viltrox, you know, 
metal. Now we'll talk about photos a little bit. We're just splitting hairs here when it comes to photos because the images look very similar. They, they're excellent. They're all sharp lenses and they're pretty sharp corner to corner. There is some chromatic aberration that you will see on the Sony and the Sigma, but the Viltrox, once again, surprisingly, the Viltrox has very little chromatic aberration, almost none. It is very impressive. But again, remember, chromatic aberration can generally be fixed fairly easily in post in something like Lightroom. So for me, it's not that big of an issue, but it is certainly nice to have a lens like the Viltrox without much. Boy, I tell you, it is tough to decide between these lenses. I would almost certainly go for the Sony 15 millimeter if it was anywhere near the price of the Sigma or the Viltrox lens, but it is not. It is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, it's $748. The um, Sigma can be had for usually about $350. And right now, the Viltrox lens, it'll probably will be $429 when it's fully released. But right now they're doing a campaign on the Viltrox site where the lens is being offered at a discount, which is around $360 American. So, you know, if you're thinking about getting the Viltrox lens, you should probably jump on that. Anyway, let's go back out to Handsome Alley to see what that devil is up to. Something nefarious, I bet. So the great news is these are all fantastic lenses. You just have to decide what is best for you. What focal length are you looking for? You looking for a 13, a 15, a 16? How important is weight and buttons on the lens and aperture rings that are clicky or not clicky? You are gonna be using this a lot on a gimbal or are you gonna stick it on a tripod? Are you a Rockefeller? Do you have tons of cash? Or are you trying to save up for other things that you might need? Maybe lights, microphones. Anyway, I can't answer all of these questions for you. I mean, I probably can, but I won't. I don't have time to talk to you directly, but I will tell you that I personally own the 16 from Sigma and the 13 from Viltrox, so I probably won't get the 15 right now anyway because I don't do a ton of gimbal work with that focal length so I probably now that could change and also this video could blow up I could get 20 million views and then I have all the money I want and I will buy the lens anyway just because I can who knows how life will actually go anyway thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already like uh, leave a comment obviously I uh, deal with my comment section. I let them bully me into testing lenses that I didn't expect to test. So, uh, you know, drop another comment. Who knows? I'll probably do exactly what you ask, uh, as long as it's reasonable and not gross. You know what I'm saying? You, you know who you are. Anyway, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.